Have we been lied to about how Christianity began? In these programs, we've been exploring conspiracy theories about Jesus and the secret Gospels that didn't make it into the Bible. But why should we take seriously the Gospels that are in the Bible? The Gospels in the New Testament are early, and we have good reason for thinking they're early. They're also reliable and give us authentic portraits of the historical Jesus, and we think this for good reasons. One of them is uh, uh, what I call verisimilitude. That is, the Gospels are similar to or reflect the way things really were. We have archaeology, after all, and we can do excavations that relate to the beginning of the first century uh, in Galilee and also in Jerusalem. And what we find is remarkable correspondence between uh, the New Testament Gospels and what we actually unearth. We have historical sources. Josephus, the Jewish historian, describes this period of time. And we find coherence. Uh, between the New Testament Gospels on the one hand and our historical sources and archaeological evidence on the other. And then there are other uh, things that come into play where scholars who know how to evaluate historical documents uh, make judgments. They have criteria that they follow for determining authenticity, reliability, and that sort of thing. And the New Testament Gospels score very highly. Uh, when they're examined by historians. And, uh, and so in my own experience, in my own experience with archaeology and with archaeologists, I find archaeologists of any stripe, Jewish, Christian, whatever, uh, they regularly make use of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They never make use of the Gospel of Thomas or the Gospel of Peter or any of the Gnostic Gospels, and that's why. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I might add the book of Acts, those writings are reliable guides as to where to dig and then how to understand whatever it is you've found when you dig it up. But this doesn't apply to the second and third century Gospels, which the church, in my view, wisely chose to omit from the canon. And so the, in, a, in, a, in a brief way, uh, that's important evidence that shows that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are telling us about the real historical Jesus. They talk about real people, real places, real events, and historical and archaeological research has uh, shown that they are quite accurate. As we've been exploring conspiracy theories about Jesus and the secret Gospels that didn't make it into the Bible, we've asked, have we been lied to about how Christianity began? It's clear now that the answer is, yes, we have. We've picked our way through exaggerations, forgeries and claims that ignore the evidence. We've seen that there are all kinds of misleading claims and distortions, from the dishonest claim that Paul reinvented Jesus to the claim that the Roman Emperor Constantine chose the Gospels. The truth is that the first Christians agreed that Jesus was the Son of God that he died for our sins and that he'd risen from the dead. They had good reasons why they trusted some Gospels enough to include them in the Bible, but not others, and these reasons are still valid today. We've seen again and again that they trusted the four Gospels that are in the Bible, and only these four, because they're early, they come from the first century, and they're historically credible, they're based on reliable testimony. These Gospels are there for a reason. If these accounts of Jesus are historically reliable, and if what they have to say is so important, isn't it worth taking the time to read them and making the effort to understand what they say about him? Music